Hello and welcome to another episode of DCS World with Sour Peppers. Since I began flying the MI8 MTV in DCS, I thought I would do a number of tutorial or informational videos about the aircraft for those who are interested. The first topic I wanted to touch on is something that I had a difficult time finding information on and is not covered in detail in the MI8 flight manual for DCS, so I thought I would make a quick video covering the topic. That topic would be the various fuel systems on board the MI-8, including tanks, valves, and the fuel consumers. On the MI-8, there are four fuel consumers, the right and left engine, the auxiliary power unit, or APU, and the KO-50 heater. To fuel these systems, there are three fuel tanks, along with two optional auxiliary tanks for longer range, although I'm not sure you can actually use those auxiliary tanks in DCS. The first of those tanks is the service tank, located on the inside of the aircraft towards the rear, near the APU. Next we have the two external tanks that are located on either side of the aircraft, and two to four internal auxiliary tanks that can be fitted. However, as I said before, I'm not sure if you can actually use those in DCS. All of the aircraft's fuel consumers are fed from the service fuel tank and the service tank is fed from the external fuel tanks. The fuel line between the service tank and the external tanks is equipped with a float valve that controls the flow of fuel from the external tanks into the service tank. To prevent the service tank from overfilling, the float valve will cut off the flow of fuel from the external tanks into the service tank when it is full. When the level in the service tank it begins to go down, the valve will open, allowing fuel to top it up from the external tanks. In the event that the service fuel tank valve fails, there is a way to bypass it and thus feed fuel directly into the service tank from the external tanks. There are three fuel pumps on the aircraft that allow the fuel to travel throughout the fuel system. One submerged pump for each individual external tank will pump fuel into the service tank and the service tank pump for pumping fuel from the service tank into the various aircraft fuel consumers. These are controlled via switches on the fuel management panel in the cockpit. Along with these fuel pumps there are four fuel shutoff valves. Two of these will cut off fuel from the right and or left engine primarily for use in the event of an engine fire. One is a bypass switch for the service tank float valve in the event that the float valve fails, preventing the external tanks from refueling the service tank. This will divert fuel from the external tanks around the float valve and directly into the service tank. Lastly is the cross-feed cutoff valve. This will prevent fuel from being able to flow between the right and left external tanks in the event that one sustains damage and begins to leak. All of these valves and pumps can be controlled via the fuel management panel in the cockpit. The switch on the lower left is for the service fuel tank pump, which you can engage. And underneath it, there is a light indicating that the pump is on and engaged. Just to the right of the service tank switch, you have the switches for the left and right external fuel tank pumps, which you can also engage indicated by lights located directly below the switch for the tank in question. On the top left of the panel, you have the cutoff switches for the left and right engine. This will prevent fuel from going to either or engine, and you would use this in case of an engine fire. In the up position, they are open when you put them in the down position. They are closed, indicated by the messages in yellow <coughs> underneath them. Just to the right of the engine fuel cutoffs, you have the switch for the cross-feed cutoff switch. This also indicated as closed via a yellow light directly beneath or directly to the left beneath. The switch under the black safety flap to the right of the cross-feed valve 
cutoff will engage the service tank float bypass. When it is in the up position, then the float is bypassed, and it can only be in the up position as long as the flap is open. As soon as you close it, it'll shut it off or get rid of the bypass again. So when you want to bypass that float, you have to keep the safety cover open and the switch in the up position. Lastly, we have the fuel quantity transmitters that will show you the fuel levels in each individual tank or the total fuel level between all the tanks combined. This is located on the bottom left of the right hand seat cockpit panel along with a switch to change the readout. When reading the gauge, the outer scale only applies to the total fuel level while the inner scale is for reading the level on the individual tanks. I hope this will help you in the future for the basic functions of the aircraft fuel system as well as troubleshooting and potential crisis situations. Knowing how exactly the fuel system works should help you in the event that you have an engine fire, a fuel leak, or a failure in one of the fuel system's components. So until next time, have a good one.